Good evening and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for Creating Music for Chinese Instruments with Gao Hong. My name is Billy Lackey, Vice President of Artist Services for the American Composers Forum. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded. Gao Hong will post this video to her YouTube page and we will also link this video to the ACF website in our resources section. By participating, you agree to what is being posted in the chat section right now, and that was also displayed at the beginning of this webinar. Before we get started, I ask that everyone please mute their microphones um, and keep them muted during the presentation. Gao Hong will answer questions at the end of the webinar. Throughout the evening, we'll share links in the chat to various resources she's providing. Please also share your questions in the chat as Gao Hong is providing information regarding each instrument. During the last 20 minutes, we will go through and address the questions. It is my great honor to welcome internationally acclaimed musician Gao Hong. Thank you so much for having me and uh, Abeli and Laura. And I really, really want to thank all the people who come in to uh, join us. And thanks um, the State Arts Board to provide um, a grant for this program. And uh, like I will say, I'm, I'm trying to do is to uh, briefly introduce uh, everybody about how the beginner of how you, um, how you compose for uh, Chinese instruments because I got so many people asking, how you do this because of the, um, uh, music is so different. So now I'm going to do a, a presentation. I will share on the screen. And um, then if you have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat. Then later uh, I will answer uh, one by one. Uh, right now, let's go to the presentation first. Okay, I want to make sure I share the Send uh, with the audio just a second. Yes, we did. Okay. <laughs> now uh, let's go the first. So the Chinese traditional instruments, uh, the first thing I also tell people when you compose for Chinese instrument, you first know we have a four groups, but one group we don't, one group we don't have in the Western uh, orchestra is the plucked strings because uh, we have a wind, we have a brass, we have a string, we have a percussion, but uh, Western, uh, you know, the Western has it, but we don't have, we only have a plucked strings and the bold strings, which mean the wind, I mean, uh, the strings, then the wind, we don't have a brass. So whenever you're trying to uh, compose for Chinese instrument, the first thing in mind, you have to think about the plucked strings because even though the hammer dulcimer i'm going to say introduce each one the hammer dulcimer even though it's a kind of like a percussion but in chinese because it sounds like a plugged so they are in the, i mean they are in the plugged string instruments rather than uh, percussion so just let you know that so um the plugged string uh, it's the most uh aesthetic Chinese instrument you can use because like I said, not many of other one has this. So of course the pipa, almost like a guitar, it's four strings and then later I will go uh, show you uh, what it sounds like, how to write. But uh, and the zhongran, it's kind of like a guitar in in America. So it's kind of like, a, okay, here's the, then we have a zither, it's called the zheng or gu zheng. Zheng is the, like a, the 21 strings, kind of like if you wanted to compose for Chinese instrument, you can kind of sounds like a harp. So you can uh, refer to that the song and the compos composition ideas. The yang qing, which means the hammer dulcimer, that one is uh, almost like a piano because they have so many ranges, 150s plus of strings so have a uh, many many of uh, if you say i have no idea what i should write for the yang qing then you can think about how you write for the piano but you have to think about they only have uh, two hammers so don't put a uh, 10 fingers for that you only can do a two note at once but the 
the range sounds like the、um, piano. The next one is the Liu Qing, the small tiny one. Ah,、uh, the sounds a little high. It's kind of like a mandolin. So if you say I I know the mandolin song, you can borrow the mandolin song for that. Then Sun Xian is the three string here. Um, it's kind of like a banjo. So if you ever think about、uh, I want a banjo song into the Chinese ensemble, that would be the good、um, instrument to pick. Then the, the other one is the Gu Qin. Gu Qin is hardly ever to be the ensemble for chamber group or big ensemble, but recently have a lot of、uh, duet, trio, or qu quartet, quintet. So that's why I bought that because everybody love Gu Qin song, kind of like a old old bass with a slice. So it's really really fun. So I'm going to demonstrate the P part next. So now this is here one of the group because I cannot to literally to introduce every instrument. Otherwise, we probably will be here until tomorrow or maybe next week. So I'm just each group. I will pick one to kind of the most important one. So um, so the run I'm going to uh share with you. Okay, so um, let's let's hear what the sounds like. Run, run, just like a uh, lute. But it have a lower strings. Okay, now let's hear the uh Zhong Ran. What the sounds like? So this one is chamber group, which uh Da Ran. When I say Ran, Ran have a a three, big Ran, which means Da Ran, which means lower, lower, kind of like a bass song. Then Zhong Ran is kind of like a guitar song. Then they have Xiao Ran. It's kind of like a little lute song. When I was in China, um. Many years ago, we didn't have that groups. Just recently, we have the da ran. Now we have zhong ran. Now we have xiao ran. So everything together sounds like a beautiful group.、Um, let's listen a little bit. You can see how cool they all together with. The Lower and higher together. That's how Xiao Ren, much higher pitch. Almost like a violin. So I cannot to uh, uh do everything because that one will be too long. But later we'll put it in in the um uh in the chat uh and then everybody can listen. I pick all the uh very important uh or the award winning um example uh for everybody who can who wanted to. Uh, learn how to do it, so that way you can always listen the whole thing to borrow. Now, next one, I'm going to talk about the pipa. The pipa have a、uh, uh, the reason I said first. Be first of all, I'm a pipa player, but、um, I also play all the other instrument because if you know my story, my mom was a music teacher, forced me learning accordion and.、Um, Yueqing, the Hmong guitar, more like the short neck. Then Liu Qing, then Erhu, the Chinese fiddle. Then Zither, the guzheng. Then violin, piano. Then until my mom realized I needed to find a job, so the pipa is more difficult. So I play the pipa. Then when I went to a central conservatory, my minor is Zhongran and the guqing. So that's why I kind of. Play all that, but not all very good. So, so now now it's the pipa. It's the most difficult to compose, even for Chinese、uh, composer. 
So I'm going to show you a little bit what's the range. And so here's the paper range. And many people uh, ask, what's the score look like? So if you want to write in a Western score, you can use the piano uh, double uh, clef, just like a, uh, F clef and G. So that's what it sounds like. The last one will be like this A, the, the up there will be way up. Uh, this the highest range. Then I'm going to show you on the um, presentation first. Then I will show you the real pipa. Okay. The next one I'm going to show you is the common use. What's the characters for the uh, four ranges? So I always say when you write for pipa, don't try to write too much of. Uh, it's not a fit in for the pipa. So the lower range. I'm, Later, I will show you it's a dark tone or usually it's like a special color. You can put a melody there. You can play chord there too. Then the middle range is the first position is very mild, gentle and pure. Sounds very sweet. You can do a lot of melody on the first uh, scene. The higher range is in the second position is the beautiful color, very clear, sharp and bright. And usually we read a lot of melody. The highest one is the first one. It's very, very sharp and very tense. So if you want to express uh, some very tension, big tension, emotion, or excitement, or battle, or whatever you think about it, then you can make that. So the, then, then, so what we will do, what's the best two uh, positions? are the first position and the second position. They're in the middle range and the high range. The highest range we don't use much, but that's for color. So just let you know, this two is the best. I'm going to show you after this because I can I can share the presentation and the, my uh, people at the same time. That's why I wanted to show you this first. Then the next one, how you compose for pipa, when you compose for pipa, the best role for what do you do. First of all, I always say, I, I wrote a pipa message book, one of the session and uh, uh, published by the Howland. One of the session just wrote how to write for pipa because so many people asked. So this one just say, pipa, you almost the trade almost like a voice, like somebody's vocal. You can use the terminal, da, beautiful, beautiful. But also, and, uh, you want to do every single melody you follow in the first position, second position, or third position. The first position, if you're trying to do a melody, it's really, really hard to hear it, too high. The lower one you can, but if you stay too long, your hand is kind of sore. <laughs> I remember I first played one of a composer um, piece, everything on the third position, I mean, first position on the xiang position. I literally, my hand is just so hurt. Then also, um, people, besides trade as, um, trade as a, a vocal, you also can trade as a a chord you can play like a guitar chord or all the kind of a chord and but trying to do use the open string I'm, I'm going to uh, show you why we need to do that I'll turn them into a, a different chord but you use the open string instead of use your fingering to get all then also um, for composing for Chinese people the most comfortable key is the D and D major or B minor, or G major or E minor, C major or A minor, F major or D minor, or A, you can do that too. The most difficult key, I will not to suggest people to, um, to compose is E flat or B flat, because I will show you why, because if you do that, literally, you have not much of a power for the pipa open string. Then also trying to use the left hand techniques as, as many as possible. Because as possible as you can, because this way the sounds unique about the pipa is not other uh, instrument can, can be used. So I always uh, 
suggestion or the composer please try to use the best pipa song rather than use pipa as a guitar or use pipa as a piano it's really really for the pipa players frustrated because oh my gosh i don't want to play this piece because everybody can play it why i need to play because uh, a lot of people didn't pay attention about how the techniques on the left hand can can express the feelings and the music uh, required. Then also trying to use many of the special sound facts because that's very appropriate for your, like if you want to imitate the water sound, if you want to imitate the uh, battle sound, that's the perfect for the pipa. So now I'm going to show you all this what I said and uh, let's, let's go show you the um, with my pipa. So now let's start why first of all i want to show you the pipa has a four position okay the up here so very dark like i said it's a, a kind of like a more um more like uh uh it's kind of like a uh lower darker You see how much I try to use your uh, slice, or you can do a. You can kind of pretend it's a, a guitar too, right? Uh, that's the first position. Like I said, the first and the second is the best song, because that that song is easy to put a melody. It's very bright, right? Now, if you come here, so it's very pretty. Even here, so all this is really beautiful. Even here, uh, but don't stay here too long because. It's First of all, it's very dark. Unless you want to, the whole piece is very dark. So don't stay there. I will always encourage people to more use this position first, the second, and the third position. The higher one is too high. See? So you want to be very, very tension, very emotional or exciting, you can use it here. So I wanted to make sure uh, people, when you're composing, uh, when you read the chord, that's the thing I don't want you to do is do like this. So you want to everything uh, like a major, which means open strings, a, D, E, A. I'm talking about a uh, D major. If I want to do that, I would do, I will do open string. Then I change the position. Sounds much better. See, you see the difference? Then you use it here. Then also uh, in Chinese chord, you don't have to be Do, Mi, So, Do. You don't have to because Chinese uh, chord usually do right. You don't have to be a, if you do this sounds more like a Western. But if you do a, so it's not the difference if you use a. a it's very awkward, so you don't want to do a too much Western um, course if you are trying to make the power sound. So uh, I will always uh, recommend you do do fa la so si re or so do mi so instead of so do mi so because. 
So try, try to use the open string. When you use the open string, that's the best way for people. That's very good. And the other thing, uh, ping a, use a lot of left hand uh, music with your band because that's not many um, music uh, um, instrument can do like a So then you can do a lot of band. So make sure you use a lot of that. And also the left hand, you can use a percussive sound. So that's the uh, techniques. If you are really interested to write a Chinese paper, uh, you can go to find uh, the book I wrote with all the sound facts and uh, like uh, imitate water or blow wind or horse trotting. So what do you do? You make the melody on the second string, then you use your jai uh, xian uh, in the Chinese um, pipa techniques. So you, you can get the melody at the same time, or you can use the meaning of that. And the, the other thing is I always wanted to tell people is when you write for a pipa, make sure uh, you don't play too much of just just the note, trying to make more people like, rather than uh, just uh, play. And the people has uh, so many of different techniques. You can use lun uh, zhi, or uh, just let you know that when you use lun zhi, the trumpet only can be on the first string. When you do a second string, it will be difficult for the people player. So you can do it, but it will be, sometime will be, touching the first string and the third string. If you still want to use the trimonal, you you put the trimonal sign will be use a guan, use a different uh, different techniques. Then if you wanted to do a so like like this technique only can be in the lower string on the higher string you can't go your position you can use your so whatever it is, so what I'm talking about is the pipa, when you write for pipa, always paying attention what you want the pipa sounds like. What you want to the left hand, the rou xian is the trum um, vibrato. So very, uh, very express uh, instrument. So, um, because it's so many uh, people play the pipa, so I'm not going to uh, do too many of um, uh, pipa example because uh, later you can go to my website to see my own composition. You can find many, many of that. So I'm going to next one, I'm going to the uh, next position, I mean, next uh, group because it's so so many I need to cover, so I have to go very quick. You can um, you can put all your uh, question in the chat room. I'm not answering any question. Join the um, join the lecture because we want to make sure everything goes through. But after that, uh, you can ask whatever question is. Right now, I'm not to take any question. So the next is, um, group is called the string. Uh, uh, bow strings. So the the first of all, they have a gao hu. It's like a two string fiddle. It sounds very very sharp, almost like a violin. Um, it's kind of a sharp sharp uh, sound. Then er hu, which means the like a almost like a uh, the sound almost like a viola or second violin. But that's a Chinese fiddle. Then we have a zhong hu, almost like a cello. So it's a kind of a lower range, it's a much bigger uh, um, sound box. Then we have a banghu. When I talk about this, I'm only talking about the common use, not everything. So I'm just letting you know that. So the banghu is made of a coconut, it's not made of a snake skin. So banghu is a, no, most time is for the northern music. 
And Gaohu is very, very elegant. It's more southern music, like a Guangdong, Canton music. And Banhu is more north. So I always tell people, when you trying to understand in Chinese music, it's more like the geography, personality, and the language dialect, and the cultural background. So when you go to North China, you see a lot of mountain and big field, you can just yell their personality. It's very open because their harsh, hardship of their life is all usually is in the mountain. They don't very convenient. They work hard, they yell, hey! They just so the music is also like that, so it's very bright. So the uh, then the language uh, dialect sounds like ni hao ma, so it's jump a lot ni da da. So because of northern China has a lot of mountain, then if you think about the melody, da da di da 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 di da da, sounds like a very very. If you draw the melody line, almost like um, it's like a mountain there. So. But if you go to China, southern China, like Shanghai, Guangdong, um, and uh, Jiangnan, Sichu, I mean, um, the silken bamboo music, they are so proud that a lot of river down south, their dialect is different too. If you say Ni Hao Ma is like jumping, but in the um, dialect in Shanghai or Guangdong, the Li Hao Ma, so if you draw the music line, uh, in the southern China, almost like a river, like a So if you just draw the line, almost look, look like a river. So if you're trying to write some music for northern China, I would not recommend it to use Gaohu because Gaohu is not bright enough. So if you say, I wanted to write for Shanghai, I went to Shanghai for something, uh, for tour, I want to write some piece, I would not recommend you to use Banhu because if you go to Beijing, please feel free to use Banhu, Jinghu, whatever you want. But that's, and also, if you say, why you have a cello and a bass on there? That's after the Cultural Revolution. We realized that Chinese um, uh, string and Chinese orchestra doesn't have a um, much of a lower range of instruments. So we borrowed from, from the Western. So now it's a standard. Uh, if you go to the Zhongyang Minzu Yue Tuan or any other Minzu Yue Tuan, you always can see they use the cello and the bass for that. So um, now I wanted to show you how the Arhu uh, sounds like. So I'm going to share So now here is the music. That's the four arhu. So they have a middle, it's called zhonghu. Zhonghu, which means the lower range. Then they have a arhu. So it's a really, really beautiful song. I just want you to hear what it sounds like. You can see a bird. So they use a uh, overtone. See, they can use both sounds like a bird. On the right side is the Zhonghu, lower. You can use a clock. Like a vocal, people's vocal.
そう。So I'm not to again,、uh, I'm not to、uh, to show everything because it's、uh, that will be take us forever to do the、uh, whole thing. So、uh, now I'm going to show you the、uh, our who.、Um, Then the next one is a、uh, Zhonghu. So I'm going to、uh, quickly show you、uh, a, the Zhonghu. That was a very uh, a very convenient thing. But now let's just see a different one. Okay, share. Oh, so. That was our Hu Zhonghu. Now、uh, let's go、uh, say what's the range. So the range is a、uh, D and A. It's open string. And later I will show you uh, uh, our Hu is a. But the best range is the A here, the middle A until we top of there. If you go higher, it's okay, but it's not the best sound. So、um, again, the best range is from the D to D. That's the Best of best. So when you compose for a arhu, treat them like a vocal, really, really vocal. It's the best for in, in imitated people talking, and、uh, uh, like a sad crying or something. For the first position, it's very easy, and the second position is easy. On the third and the fourth, you can hear the screech sound. So if you want to write a melody. I will not recommend too much of melody and on top of third position, especially the fourth position. But if you want to make a bird song or other stuff, then you can definitely do it. It's really really cool. So the best role for the arhu is the composing is to play the、uh, melodic lines and third,、uh, first the second position is mild. And gentle, pure, and a very sweet tone, and the high range is bright, and the shining tone is really pretty. And the highest range is very sharp, tense, used to add attention, emotion, or excitement. This range is not used very often, but when you use it, it's really really cool, and especially、uh, some bird singing. And trying to use a lot of left hand, like a vibrato or slice.、Uh, so when you compose, you think about the violin viola group, and but only thing you have to think about, they only have two strings. So when you think about a change position, don't go fast from the first position to third position in such a short. Uh, time or use faster passage that usually doesn't work. And sometimes I will suggest people to use open string to transition. Like I will be down, 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 then go to next one. Use something to uh to uh make sure not jump too much. And also trying to use a special sounds like you heard um the you just heard the. Uh, they did the bird. Now I'm going to show you other ones. Really, really cool. Our、uh, who、uh, uh, song. I need to share too. That's all chamber. I pick all the best、uh, chamber group.
everyone. Second position, fourth position. Okay, again, um, I picked all the uh, work samples, not just the forward, I just picked the best, uh, actually the award winning um, uh, composition. So I give you idea for how to use for the chamber group, how make this um, to all uh, sounds like a very exciting or something. So I have an arco here, so I will show you very quick. So arco is a two string, so the bow, is in between between two strings unlike the violin you can take off they're in the in between so or you can do a so you can do a, or you can do a so you can do almost uh, a lot of things you can do, uh, but like I said, they only have uh, uh, that's the first position, then the second, then the last one is a very very small chance you you can make uh, sounds like a melody. So you don't want to put too much of a high note on top of that, then uh, that will make you very very difficult. The um, and the player won't like it and even you uh, you write a lot of cousin but if you lay them to use a different sound range they make them very very uncomfortable they may not to play your piece more than wanted to because it's too hard so uh then let's go to next one next one is the wind is the dizi everybody know so it's the bamboo flute so i got this one two three four some of a little um wider longer some of a little thinner so the the longer one usually are uh is a lower like a d and for jiangnan siju which is silken bamboo music the higher one called bang di uh, that one called Chu Di. The Bang Di is a uh, for northern China. Like I said earlier, if northern music is very very bright, so they wanted to everything is sharp and then celebrate songs, you know, celebrations. So it's very short. Sometimes even they have a three inches a little cold D. So they have all these different Ds. Then the next group is Sheng. They call the mouth organ. The mouth organ is kind of like a, a literally like an organ, but they holding up a really really cool instrument for one one group to blending in together. It's really cool. Then sona is the one the very sharp, like a trumpet, but it's a sharper than the trumpet. So it's a very, very bright if you want to do a celebration for wedding or funeral, you know that that's what a Chinese people are doing. Then xiao is a classical, more like a sakuhachi song. It's a very quiet for like ancient, uh, very, very beautiful uh, emotional piece I'm going to show you. Now Hulu Si is the minority, one of the Hmong and the Yi and the southern Yunnan province. A lot of minority people use the Xun is a very, very uh, haunting instruments. I, I call the sci-fi music. <laughs> Sounds like, woo, it's like a ghost or something. Now I'm going to show you the deeds. Um, uh, in this lecture, it's not about uh, how to compose. I'm just uh, give people idea. The first time when you wanted to write for a Chinese orchestration, how you use the instrument, uh, what you want. So that's the purpose. Now I wanted to show you the these. These usually is very bright. When you're trying to use these, you always feel like, wow, it's so pretty. So um, you wanted to use the these to, like the spring's coming. It's always, always very pretty and bright. So now here, listen. Again, I'm use a chamber group because use a chamber group always give you the idea how to club I mean how to blend with other instrument
So now you can see this five is the besides the uh, besides the percussion group you you have a string you have a wind you have a plugged then the plug has the zither in the middle is twenty one strings is like a harp it's really really beautiful when you trying to uh, write for scenery like a Chinese music always doing a lot of scenery then the pipa is very high kind of like a bright then the da is kind of like the uh, cello here. So uh, if you want to uh, start with writing a, a small group, I always uh, suggest you to do a, like a string and wind and plucked. Start with that and uh, then not write a uh, too busy. Like this one is very, very um, beautiful and uh, I'm talking more later uh, about this, um, how we be careful when we write a uh, read for uh, music the um some composer like to be a complicated they want to say how about uh uh let's let's do something very very uh exciting but if you write it too complicated end up the uh, the instrument doesn't work or the musician can't do it you literally this suffering you wouldn't get your music so it's really, really uh, cool. All this video will be posted uh, for uh, in this uh, chat group. You can watch the whole thing because right now uh, I'm not I'm not able to play the whole thing. That's why I list that uh, on there. Okay, next one is the sheng. Uh, I'm going to play a piece including a sheng, this one, and xiao. And the pipa I played it, and also gu qin is hardly ever in uh, in uh, ensemble. But this one is the quintet, uh, and arhu, and this beautiful piece we just made this uh, for the Chinese uh, New Year. Uh, one of the professor Zhu Yi, uh, Professor Zhu uh, wrote this piece at the world premiere. We made this. It's really, really, really beautiful. I hope you like this. Okay, I'm going to show you. It's called a Lotus.
那这个公司。This uh, uh, five people are classmates from Central Conservatory, and uh, we couldn't rehearse. So basically, everybody used the headphone, then edit together, just like we do in the, um, YouTube. So it's really, really a uh, uh, cool piece. But even though five of, five of us are very, very experienced players, but the composer are purposely not right trying to show off what techniques we are. They wanted to show off each instrument, the quality that the Guqing is a very, very low range. The Zhong Ran is kind of like in the middle. Then the string, uh, Arhu is kind of like a melody over top. Then the shell is a, just a beautiful, like a wind instrument, the sheng just blending together. So that's the one of the really, really, uh, high quality of music example when you first start to write for beginner uh, trying to write this is not for beginner musicians because maybe it's a little too difficult because it's a, a kind of a little difficult to um, to make a sound so beautiful but if you want to write for beginner uh, players to make them easier to play rather than to try and show off your techniques trying to use the um, instruments the characters what's the unique sound that's really really cool so um now i'm going to back to the uh, uh, presentation again um, this the next one uh, is called sona the sona is a really really uh, beautiful beautiful um uh, you obviously for the wedding, but we usually don't use this much for, uh, we don't use much of for a small ensemble. So I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, how this sauna sounds like. <laughs>
you can clearly see uh, the sona is not uh, very much using for chamber music. So it's more for wedding celebration or funeral or for street uh, music. So you, it's very, very bright. Usually Chinese New Year we use a lot. So uh, that's the other thing you wanted to use is for a colorful, um, colorful instrument. If you wanted to in a small ensemble, then you can use that. Uh, is that so? All this um, again. I'm talking about all this uh, example are is the new modern uh, composer. I saw somebody say, "Can I talk to more about the um, what's uh, what's going on with um, uh, what's going on with the new compositions, the composer composition? Who are the composers? So because uh, because it's so short time." I can introduce each one of them, but uh, I will list everything on the chat. Then you can go there uh, after, t we'll have a 20 minutes. You can ask me, we can go back, we can show you more. Uh, just today, just owning a taste of how the Chinese music, I tell you, if I have time, I would do every one of them if we have more time. That's the first time I'm doing this for just introductions, not very detailed. But if many, many people still interested, I will be happy to uh, do later more uh, deep uh, digging with uh, uh, the techniques when you write it. But today is more like the first ever introduction. So if you already know a lot of this, maybe not very useful. So the, this is the Zi, um, if we are using uh, uh, the wrench. So if you, on the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, there's a six hole. If you cover all, that will be the key of the D, uh, D. Uh, so a Di Zi, which means they don't change. Uh, they, they can change the fingering, but usually they just change the instrument. So uh, the Di Zi, so that's a, the lower syringe to the higher syringe, but they only have a six hole. So after this all done, they're using their breath to make it higher. So when you compose for these, trying to not to, uh, definitely not to get a too many of on the top of the range. The best role for the these in any composition is to play the beautiful melody again like a gorgeous and like a sin and also the first the second uh, range is mild it's just like everything sweet the high range is bright and sharp if you're trying to use a lot of left hand like a trill or you can try to do a lot of tone techniques so southern music usually use the left techniques to make the beautiful uh, water uh, sweet sound and for the northern music it's very sharp, You more like a, uh, um, use your tone. So I'm going to show you that these are the characters. So what, I mean, how, what's kind of a colorful, the these? Um, so how the colorful look sounds like, it's so beautiful. You literally can imitate, um, imitate the whole bird. You see, tsh, use the tone to make the sound little change. Use the fingering, use your tongue to make the sounds like a bird. See, it's really, really, is such a, such a 
so many of different uh, uh, textures for the deeds. So now um, I'm going to uh, go to the next one. It's the percussions. So if you wanted to write for percussion, it's the easiest one because at least you say, hey, I don't have to worry about the string. I don't have to worry about the position. But when you uh, write for Chinese um, uh, percussion, you need to make sure using wisely. Again, a, a small gong, a big gong, the simple, especially the wooden fish. It's the very, very ethnic Chinese music. You want to use the wooden fish. And Chinese percussion always celebrate and joyful ceremonies, such as wedding, a har harvest festival. So I'm going to show you. Um, I always say the uh, in the middle it's called the uh, pai gu. They have a pitch. It's kind of like a tom drum for us. Boom, 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 boom. You can just uh, barely, almost can do a dun da di da 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 di da da or la da remi. Whatever you can do a pentatonic scale to make the music uh, sounds like a, a melody. Now here, listen the music, uh, percussion. So they added a uh, Western stereophone. Uh, mm -hmm. You probably think of, hey, that sounds like a, a Japanese taiko. <laughs> yeah, kind of like a, we all kind of borrow each other. Uh, everything is kind of uh, different. Um, so I'm going to uh, ask you the um, uh, next one. I'm going to uh, go back to here and uh, because basically I'm just do a so quick to go through what's the instrument, what do we do? The next one is for the uh, people who wanted to uh, try to compose and um, have a summarize lesson because I've been a director for the Chinese Music Ensemble at Carlton for 20 years now. So I realized for the beginner or for any people who want to write for Chinese instrument, I learned so much of different things. Um, try not to uh, show off your techniques of how your uh, rhythm or something. So I will say, do compose nice melody. So that people, the players love to play. So you don't want to work so hard that they only play the once, nobody wants. So for me, um, I'm, I'm a player and also composer. Use the best way, easy way, but still beautiful. That's the 
ideal world. You write the easy to let us, uh, people to play, but the music come out as fresh and beautiful. That's win-win situation. For you, they'll have more perform uh, performances for the player. They love, enjoy, so your music is almost 99 95 percent is a success so and also composer in the um uh rhythm not too easy uh, too difficult to count because sometimes you too difficult count they fall apart especially for the uh beginners for the live concert sometimes suddenly there's nothing in there because somebody can't wrong and also in, in, use the instrument instrumentation make sure use them you don't want to use a uh, anemetry student to work for PhD uh, topic. Same thing. You don't want to use arhu trying to play pipa song. You don't want to pipa to trying to play like a sounds arhu. So trying to use the best quality, uh, best uh, colorful song, uh, picking the instrument uh, to to uh, express your feelings and also use them wisely. And also use the techniques, uh, like I said, the left hand, the right hand, even for the wind instrument, trying to use the uh, uh, hands techniques, also use the tongue techniques. And use the best key for the best sound. So like if you're trying to use a E flat uh, on the pipa, I often joking say that's like a between the piano black key and the white key. That's the most uncomfortable um, in, uh, thing for any PIPA player. So trying to lay the, um, use the open string uh, so you can lay the, stu uh, lay the PIPA player play better song. Not to do too complicated phrase rhythm because Chinese music, if you want to use Chinese music just for color, it's okay. Then you just put it here and there. But when you want to have a whole piece, you want to make sure they are not too difficult, too choppy, because that's not Chinese style. And use a clear melody, not just kind of not clear, then people cannot follow. Also make the instruments play uh, the techniques right and use the, don't use the wrong range. Like I said, everything has the best sound. You don't want to, um, tender to sing, uh, singing or bass vocal to sing soprano, same thing. And use the techniques incredibly, you will make it very, very difficult. And don't let them rest too long because I learned this very hard way. Some uh, new modern music people love to write a lot of music uh, to counting. The, most Chinese uh, people don't count much because they're used to the melody, uh, not you know the melody line to me melody line. So they listen to the melody. But if you have too much measures to rest, uh, there's no melody. Literally, they will lost. So that's the few thing I will say. The next thing I wanted to whoever come today, there is a wonderful opportunity for Dunhuang competition. So I really really uh, encourage you. Everyone uh, today, if you wanted to do it, join the April. Start April 1st until June. You can write for two or 20 musicians. So they also, uh, you can do it to combine it with one or two uh, uh, Western mu music. Uh, I mean, Western instruments like a percussion or wind or cello or whatever. Actually, they're looking for something is for beginners, uh, for the players to play, uh, and also for the uh, professional. So um, you can just read something, and they they are looking for something very uh, fresh, not a hundred percent of Chinese, but they love the outsider idea of Western uh, concept. So um, you can uh, actually, um, Dunhuang Award is the one of the most famous uh, competition. They had a, all the uh, work sample you watched, that was last last year, last time competitions award winning a piece. So I the reason I give you the example, just let you know what they looking for. Something not a vanguard or too modern is something 
beautiful and easy to listen and also they give you a um per group the gold medal silver brown and they give you money too so it's a, a lot of money i think i forgot how much money was but anyway that that opportunity also listed on the america composer form uh uh america composer form website and the, do go there uh, to uh try and if you have a question my contact information is on here you can do a screenshot or um, uh, Laura maybe put it in the chat so uh, just go home people at the gmail it's very easy and if you want to hear more about a uh, uh, pipa music you can visit my Chinese ChinesePipa.com or you can go to my YouTube you can come to my Facebook and I also have a Chinese music ensemble uh, at Carlton that's all the beginners it's so easy to, you can find it and you can hear the work sample then you can go to the Chinese music on YouTube YouTube uh, and I international friendship through the performing arts is the co-sponsor for the Dunhuang award so you can go to their uh, website to see uh, contact me or can contact them for any question I'm highly highly encourage you to do so because uh, it's a great opportunity and for good exercise and uh, very very cool okay now I would like to uh, open up with uh, questions Sorry uh, for everybody had a beer with me for so long. <laughs> so any, I saw a lot of questions. So anybody? Yeah. Thank you so much, Gaong, for sharing all of your knowledge and uh, the music. Uh, so I have a couple of the questions that came in earlier. Okay. Uh, I figured we could cover some of those. So okay. uh, one question uh, was that, um, will we have access to the PowerPoint in the future? I'd like to have access to the range and notes. So would you be able to share the PowerPoint in the future? Oh, yeah. So okay. uh, actually the, the range of notes, so in, like this YouTube, I mean, this one, I will put it on the YouTube. You can watch it whatever you want because all the range on there. That's so what, yeah. So we'll give, um, we're providing uh, the, the video to Gao Hong and Gao Hong will place uh, the video on her YouTube page and we'll also link to the ACF page. So the resources will be listed there. And we could also uh, email everybody um, that registered for this event because you provided an email address uh, once we have the video up and running and the resources provided. Yeah, and uh, you you can sign up with my mailing list too. So and you can come to my Gmail, say, hey, uh, Gao Hong, I need this range. You can always uh, contact me. And also, I give you uh, great opportunities if you want to write something, and something uh, if it's very appropriate or very beautiful, we, uh, the Carlton Chinese Music Ensemble will be happy to play your music if you want to try something. It will be uh, really, really cool. And some opportunities for everybody be able to uh, do something. Yeah. Um, another question, there are a couple of questions. Uh, yeah. For the techniques described, what are the standard notation symbols for these techniques showcased? And uh, the same person asked, would uh, it would be also nice to know some scores that you would recommend uh, to study for that? So uh, it's really, really complicated. Like I, like I said, today really is just to introduce the beginner, beginner that. But really, really, somebody said, I love the part two on this whole topic. Yes. <laughs> so basically, I could do this for every week for each, uh, like a pipa has over 100 different notation you can put, you can put on. And uh, then the gu zheng has, so everybody everything has it but really it's not can cover for today but if you have a uh, pacific you want to write something i will you can write in both notation one is a western notation and uh, right now almost uh, uh, chinese people can read uh, uh western notation uh, but uh, simplified is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti and uh, i do have um, you know Oh, like I said, if you really want to, I'm not trying to push in to sell my book, just leave you know, but the, my book has wrote everything listed with um, all that. 
but I can be a proud to tell you this uh, Howlander book, this book, and is the first uh, English book for our people. So I know I got so many people ask me questions. So I even had one session for how to write for people. What's the techniques look like? They say I list the whole thing. So if you you are interested in something, you always can find it. Um, uh, or like you always can find it online. Uh, to see if there is English. If you don't, and basically I can do. Somebody want to if there is a score we can study. Definitely. Um, if um, if you guys are interested, I can send you some scores. And uh, or you can email me say, could you send me a score? I want to see what look like. I will be happy to send you some some of the score. I may not be able to send you the whole score, but at least a partial of them if I got a permission from the composer. Um, and then I think you addressed another question earlier about uh, the names of the composers of the compositions that um, you were listed. So maybe um, we could talk after and we could get the names. And then when we post the links on the website, we could list yes. the names of the artists. So that way yes. it's listed. Yeah. Um, so the reason I didn't put it on there because that was so quick, I just kind of gave you know that. But on the video, everyone every beginning has their name of course is in chinese if you're interested in say i like i really love this like the right now in the chat uh every everything has a link so if you please copy all the link you want then pick the one and say i really like this piece can you tell me about this background or something i will be happy to uh to answer your questions um, so that was the questions that we saw from earlier. Uh, please uh, feel welcome to enter more questions on the chat, or if you're comfortable, you could unmute your video or your microphone and ask questions at this time. What yeah. other questions do we have for Gahong? I guess everybody fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Is everybody fell asleep? Okay. So anybody have any question? Oh, Xian. Yes. <laughs> Xian. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being here. Yeah, any you question? Have a question? No? Somebody trying to say something. You're yeah, being... go ahead and Un unmute your mic. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for uh, Professor uh, Gao and uh, Billy, <laughs> my my UMGC uh, friend. Yeah, I'm very interested in knowing more about the orchestration, about how to write the uh, Chinese orchestra, Chinese music uh, instrument orchestra. Can you yeah, talk that's... more about the orchestration? Yes, yeah, it's so difficult. Basically, uh, uh, I... A lot of people always say uh, writing a Chinese organization and the Western is so different. If you're trying to make a do mi so do with all the big chord, like a Western chord, you literally sounds like uh, using a Chinese colorful instrument to play Beethoven. So don't do that. So trying to use more like a uh, learning more uh, Western, I mean Chinese harmony and the way rather than use the western but uh, now turn around when you go to china they love the idea too because they love the idea to put a new instrument there so combine combine together so it's too short for for one and a half hour 90 minutes or for to how to write a lesson so my suggestions again is to use the techniques use the range use the uh, instrument, instrumental characters wisely. Just don't try to get it too much of, um, you know, oh yeah, somebody wrote say there is a book on writing for Chinese orchestra. orchestra. Yeah, that's um, really, really uh, cool. Uh, you can go find that, I think in English. And uh, yeah, you got that, cool. Yeah, so um, if you, um, for my next project, I do want to do is to hopefully I will have a more 
uh, get a grant or something, I will start doing uh, details. Today is more like a to, I really want to introduce the opportunities for the Dunhuang uh, Award. So trying to do something. And then they will give you feedback. If you get it, that's great. If you don't get it, you know, at least you tried. That's what I, I will say. Yeah. yeah, I would, uh, uh, you know, suggest you give more uh, lectures in the future about this and then go into more details uh, for each topic. Each yes. Week. Or yeah, so, like example, if I wanted to uh, talk about how to compose for a pipa, I literally can do a two hours minimum. <laughs> because I'm writing my own then for the Chinese ensemble, I am always arrange everything based on each term, different instrumentation, different people's level. So I literally learned that for 20 years, if I use too difficult, they'll put it in there, guess what, they can play it. They play so poorly. I would rather to, like I always just say, as a composer, you're trying to use the simplest way to show the best quality of that. You player love you, then audience love you. You love your music too. <laughs> that's that's my goal. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So somebody else is a yeah. Poet. I think Guadalupe. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, hello, uh, it's really hello. nice to, to meet you. Uh, I really enjoyed your presentation and I'm really very excited because uh, I haven't had uh, an opportunity like this ever. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm personally, personally really interested in Chinese culture and music. And uh, I wanted to ask you, I don't know if, if this is very bold of me, but I wanted to ask you if you if you teach uh, like composition or uh, orchestration in Chinese music or uh, yeah if you give like one on one classes or do you teach somewhere online for example uh, for people who are uh, away or abroad I just wanted to, to yeah okay thank you so right now because of a pandemic I did give a uh, less lessons through uh, Skype. Not Skype from Zoom. Actually, one of the uh, Canadian composer who wrote a uh, Zhongran Concerto for Taipei Orchestra. So um, he is amazing composer, but he is a uh, uh, Western composer. So he never read for the Zhongran. So I literally uh, give them private license about a. Uh, uh, since to do what's the best range, what I think you should do. Yeah, I do give a lot of Zoom private lessons now because of the pandemic. I have a, I have students from New York, of San Francisco, China, Canada, uh, Argentina, whatever. <laughs> so yes, if you're interested, I will be happy to show you. Especially, I have a lot of uh, my own problem when I started uh, teaching, the students couldn't handle it. Then eventually for 20 years, I know what's the best way to start for beginning beginners, then put it the simple way, some exercise. Look, you can start this way, then you go that way, then kind of twist around later. So now it's kind of like that. Yes, I do uh, teach all the instrument online now. <laughs> That's the one thing is about positive for the pandemic. I see more students than ever from different uh, world. That's, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I guess I will contact you by email then. And uh, yes. Yes, go uh, to it's really, the... really nice to, to meet you. And yeah, yeah, thank you thank so much. And I'm also really grateful with the uh, American Composers Forum for putting this together and offering <laughs> this for everyone uh, free of charge and such. So thank you everyone and yeah. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate the thank, thank the, the America Compost Forum is so wonderful. Vanessa is here, our CEO is here. Billy is the countless of the time. Yeah, hi Vanessa. And Laura is so supportive. They're so amazing. I, I'm so honored to be here to talk to you. And I saw some familiar face and uh, some of I don't know, but um, I'm just hope give you the idea to give you the interest. I've been telling uh, Vanessa for a long time. 
because before I came to America, people started writing for Pipa, and suddenly I realized I need five hands to play it because I never know how to how to compose for Pipa. And end up one of the people player commissioned this uh composer. The people player refused to eat. I mean, you refuse to play because it's not for Pipa. It's for 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 piano. So then I've been doing. I have done so much composition. For new music, and then I realized it's really, really difficult. I'm trying to lay all the composer to interesting right for pipa, interesting right for Chinese instrument because that's a diversity we're living in. So that's a, I've been telling Vanessa. I said I really want to do this. I said thanks so much for put this together, and of course I thanks for the uh, state arts board. I hope I get more grant. I will cover more because I know I got so many request all the time so how you write this how right but now you know i only have one grant next time maybe i can get 10 grand <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but anyway <laughs> thank yeah. you so much yeah yeah thank you so much for attending we're so um yeah we're so happy that we could bring this to everyone um i think william might have had a question yes um, okay william um do you know of any uh, good resources in english regarding the swana I know wow. I butchered the pronunciation, but... Oh, sona. Mm -hmm. uh, sona is the high pitch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far, I know uh, there is not a many book by English, because when I published my first paper, that's the Hollander, the first one ever in English published in Chinese instrument. I'm trying to convince them to write for Guzheng, write for uh, Pipa, I mean, uh, Arhu and all the stuff. I'm really trying to convince them. The CEO very, very happy about that. And I, when I first started my Pipa book, and that, that was really, really nice. And uh, now I'm hopefully I'm trying to convince them to do. But so far, I don't think the Suona has English. I'm sorry for that, but I do have a classmate who is Guo Yaji, is one of my uh, classmates in Central Conservatory, and uh, he is in Boston. If you, you you check his website, maybe he can give you some lessons. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Other questions? We've got a few minutes left. Yeah. I was so rushed. I have to look at this club. I wish I could play all the music. It's so beautiful. I really encourage you, make sure you mark down every link. The All the link I gave to you is the precious. I got the permission from the Dunhuang Award competition. That's all the award winning. They pick the top 19, the best. So I pick the from the 19, I picked the nine, the best. So, and because like uh, the, this lecture just gave you the example of how to write, what's the best way to write, and then you that's the perfect example for you, how to write. You know, that's really really cool. And but uh, somebody asked, do you teach people? Yes, I do teach people. <laughs> it's a, that's my uh, major. <laughs> so I do do a lot of people player. I have a lot of people player here. And, uh, but anyway, any questions to someone? We're so glad. Okay, you join us. Thank you so much. And do you, okay. Any, any other questions before I go? All right. Um, thank you so much, Gahong. It's been such a pleasure and we're always so grateful for you and, and sharing your gifts and talents with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody out there tuning in and joining us. Uh, we do have um, partnerships with the American Composers Orchestra. Our next webinar will be Wednesday, March 24th on equity in orchestra. So if you'd like to join us for that, I put the link there. Once again, thank you so much for sharing your time with us and being with us. And we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Everybody have a great evening. <laughs>